The skyrocketing cost of living is difficult for both people who've lived in Canada for a long time and for newcomers. This is hardly the life Sali Najib envisioned when he left Uganda. Here we have 150,000 people on strike, the biggest federal strike in Canadian history. Canadians can't get their services. Meanwhile, their housing costs have doubled and crime is ravaging through our streets. And what is he going to do today? Well, start spreading the news. He's leaving today. <laughs> he wants to be a part of it. New York, New York. Leader of the official opposition of Canada, Pierre Polyev, is right. When a country grapples with many issues like strikes, housing bubbles, and immigration, many leaders would want to face these challenges. But not just in Trudeau. Instead of tackling the country's problem, he would rather take a vacation in New York and turn a blind eye to Canada. He just never fails to disappoint. And to make matters worse, he's closed the door of opportunity that Canada was once known for. Immigrants, who used to be seen as a good thing, are now seen as a problem for Canada. The influx of newcomers has driven housing prices through the roof, causing the cost of living to skyrocket and placing immense pressure on Canadians. Imagine if the immigration plan had been more thoughtful. It could have helped with Canada's housing problem. But because of poor planning and misguided agendas, Canadians got something they didn't want, inviting 500,000 new immigrants without any good reasons or careful thinking. In today's video, we'll cover what changes Canada needs to make so that immigration can benefit benefit the country rather than making life harder for the local Canadians. But before we do that, we need to first understand how Canada's immigration system works. Canada's immigration system is designed to operate with precision, carefully selecting individuals based on skills and qualifications. This is important as it gives the country the ability to select immigrants who can positively contribute to Canada's economy. Once qualified under a specific program, individuals receive an invitation to apply for permanent residence. The ensuing background check and document verification ensure that those entering the country align with Canada's economic and societal needs. This deliberate approach reflects Canada's commitment to choosing individuals with specific skills, whether as a doctor, engineer, or other fields. While some may have concerns about immigrants, the truth is they're essential. When immigration is done right, it's good and necessary. The Canadian government aims to welcome 1.5 million immigrants by 2025, and this goal is based in part on basic math. Like many Western nations, Canada has an aging population with fewer babies being born. To ensure a country's growth instead of shrinkage, it's crucial to bring in immigrants strategically. The importance of population growth lies in its direct link to economic expansion. A larger population naturally boosts economic growth by increasing consumer demand, expanding the workforce, and fostering innovation. The positive outcomes of a growing economy include improved living standards, better infrastructure, and an overall all rise in the quality of life. Therefore, focusing on encouraging population growth through immigration is a logical and strategic investment in the nation's economic prosperity. Immigration already contributes to nearly all of the country's labor force growth, and projections indicate that by 2032, it will make up the entire population growth. Currently, one in four Canadians have come to the country as immigrants, the highest ratio among G7 nations. In comparison, the United States, often called the world's melting pot has only 14% of its population as immigrants. The United Kingdom shares a similar statistic with a 14% immigrant population. In the bigger picture, Canada needs skilled individuals like engineers, doctors, nurses, and structural engineers to meet everyday needs. Most sensible individuals would support this idea, but the way the immigration system has been run over the last decade has not achieved this objective. The Canadian immigration system is designed to import immigrants with the skills that the economy needs to grow and flourish. The current government has hijacked this well-designed system and has led immigration down the wrong path due to the lack of organized planning and misguided agendas. Consider the housing sector alone, for example. A report released in June by the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation indicates a pressing need for over 22 million housing units by 2030 to achieve housing affordability for all in Canada. This represents an additional 3.5 million units compared to the current national housing plan. 
Man. Many believe that immigrants are adding to the surge in housing prices and rent. As immigrants arrive, the need for housing naturally increases. Consequently, a rise in housing demands occurs with the influx of more people, leading to elevated prices and, in turn, local residents facing difficulties with rising housing costs. This sentiment is supported by a report from the Environics Institute in October 2022, revealing that 15% of Canadians think immigrants are responsible for the increasing home prices, making them difficult to afford for everyone. Moreover, labor costs are on the rise due to a substantial number of job openings in the construction sector. Many skilled trade workers such as electricians, plumbers, and carpenters in Canada are nearing retirement, creating gaps in the workforce that employers find increasingly challenging to fill. Prospective employees, given the abundance of job opportunities, are seeking higher wages. Unfortunately, as of now, immigrants are unable to bridge this workforce gap, suggesting a failure in the fundamental purpose for which Canada is pursuing immigration. Another crucial aspect is that the Canadian government is admitting the wrong types of immigrants. The widely observed Syrian refugee intake experiment serves as a stark example. In this scenario, the Canadian government's commitments exceeded its capacity. A significant portion lacked the necessary skills, becoming a liability on the Canadian government and its resources. Most of them are not employed, and many are homeless. Talking about mismatched skills and the labor market, the reality is that because of Canada's aging population, the Canadian government aims to attract young people to move to Canada. However, employers or companies have different needs. Canada needs money and wants young, hardworking individuals to help its economy. Each immigrant brings at least 10,000 Canadian dollars when coming to Canada. Settling in involves various costs like renting a house, buying winter clothes, food and transportation, among others. Consequently, immigrants start spending money from the day they arrive in Canada. It takes three to six months to understand the country, geography, and make connections and friends. On the flip side, employers in Canada are hesitant to hire new immigrants, giving reasons such as lack of Canadian experience, absence of local education, or the absence of a professional license. The idea of Canadian experience creates a problem where, without a job, one can't gain Canadian experience, and without Canadian experience, finding a job becomes a challenging task. This catch-22 leads to immigrants with important skills unable to contribute to the economy to their full potential, while at the same time making it more challenging to fill labor gaps. Instead of being an asset to the country, immigrants find themselves exploited, resulting in suffering for everyone involved. On one hand, immigrants face significant struggles, and on the other hand, overwhelmed locals experience soaring food prices, housing costs, expensive groceries, and healthcare expenditures as demand continues to grow. The immigration system initially designed to assist the Canadian economy and address labor shortages ultimately benefits no one. This is the core issue. However, immigration or immigrants are not inherently bad. The problem lies in governance and the way immigration policies are implemented. For example, immigration could be part of the solution to the housing shortage. This can be done if Canada exercises control over its immigration policies. It should strategically prioritize the admission of immigrants possessing valuable skills in trades such as plumbing, electrical work, carpentry, and other essential professions needed to build homes and apartments. This targeted approach is crucial for addressing the prevailing labor gaps, thereby contributing to the resolution of challenges impeding the pace of home construction in Canada. By deliberately importing individuals with expertise in these skilled trades, Canada can efficiently bolster its workforce and, in turn, remove significant hurdles hampering the construction industry's progress within the country. Granted, labor shortages isn't the only issue stifling home construction, there are other problems such as lengthy approval processes and supply chain constraints. But this would be a huge step in the right direction and the immigration system would actually start to benefit the country as a whole. Nevertheless, Canada's immigration strategy is introducing newcomers too quickly, especially with the increased facilitation of more non-permanent residents. Consequently, the government lacks the time to address delays and other associated problems. Furthermore, Canada can focus inward to bridge gaps in the labor force rather than continually increasing admissions. For instance, creating more affordable daycare spaces would allow more women, often the primary caregivers in the family, to return to the workforce full-time. Additionally, simplifying the process for newcomers already in the country to obtain the necessary licensing or accreditation for practicing a skilled trade in Canada would be hugely beneficial, especially in key areas. For example, in healthcare where skilled professionals are always needed, speeding up the accreditation of immigrant healthcare workers can assist in meeting the increasing demand for medical services. This not only makes the healthcare system work better, but also ensures
ensures that Canadians get timely and quality care. Similarly, in the construction industry, a quicker accreditation process for immigrant workers means they can get into skilled jobs faster. This is crucial as projects like building infrastructure and housing often need a skilled workforce to meet deadlines and requirements. By making it easier for people to start working, Canada can close the gaps in construction labor more quickly. Apart from dealing with workforce shortages, making accreditation faster can also help the country's overall economic growth. Quickly integrating skilled immigrants into the job market leads to a more productive and competitive workforce. This, in turn, can increase innovation and economic development, making Canada more resilient and active on the world stage. All of these proposed changes are not only reasonable, but also achievable. If you've lived in Canada for the last decade, you know that there's something wrong with the current immigration policies. Whether it's due to misguided agendas or lack of forethought, the way immigration in Canada has been done for the last decade could and should be much better. Let's be real, Canada doesn't need to be bringing in 500,000 new people every year. It's like the current government thinks they'll get a global award for the Most Immigrants Imported This Year Award. Why not have the best immigrants or the right types of immigrants come to the country? Reducing the number of immigrants to a sustainable number only makes sense. Trudeau's government needs to make changes to the country's immigration policies to benefit the country, not just the Liberal Party. And if they aren't able to, or simply don't want to, maybe it's time to replace those in power with people who are reasonable and actually care about Canada. If you like this video and want to learn more about immigration in Canada, check out this video here. And if this video brought value to you, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing the video. Thanks for watching.